The proper process for repairing an HVAC system is recover, repair, check for leaks, pull the vacuum, and then charge the system. With recovery, repair, and a leak check finished, and necessary tools on hand, you're ready to safely evacuate. Before starting, fill the vacuum pump with vacuum oil. Remove the cap, open the fitting, and begin pouring. Keep pouring the oil until the oil level reaches the oil line. Here you'll benefit from a large oil fill port and the convenience of a large sight glass which gives you the benefit of being able to see when the oil reaches the appropriate level. It's important to note here that the quality of your vacuum pump performance is directly related to the quality of your vacuum pump oil. The cleaner your oil, the better your pump's performance. Another important fact to mention here is that a quality two-stage pump will work with any refrigerant. It's recommended that a high vacuum mineral-based oil be used in all pumps, regardless of the type of oil that is used in the system. Now, back to the process. Once you can see through your sight glass that you've reached the proper oil level, put the fittings back on, or if desired, attach the exhaust filter. Remove the Schrader cores, if present, with the core removal tools. Install the test and charging manifold. For this demonstration, we're using a four-valve manifold. Connect the hoses from the manifold to the system. For demonstration, we're using 3 8 inch hoses for a faster and deeper vacuum. Connect the low side or blue hose to the low side core removal tool and high side or red hose to the high side core removal tool. Connect the 3 8 inch hose from the vacuum port on your manifold to the 3 8 inch port on the vacuum pump. Connect the fourth hose from the manifold to the refrigerant cylinder. If you're using an extension cord, make sure you're using the proper gauge for your pump. Plug in the power cord for the pump. Now, open all manifold valves and make sure the vacuum valve and core removal tool ball valves are open. Start the pump. For cold weather starts, open the intake port until the pump reaches running speed and then close it off. You're now pulling a vacuum. It's important that the oil level remains steady when the pump is running for proper operation, about one half to five eighths up in the sight glass. If it falls too low, the vacuum pump could be damaged. If it's too high, it will increase the oil in the exhaust. Now connect the electronic vacuum gauge for accurate vacuum measurement, like this one from Yellow Jacket. The best place to measure vacuum is at the system, not at the pump. With a combination vacuum and charging valve on your core removal tool, you can attach the electronic vacuum gauge directly to the system and isolate it from the pump, hoses, and manifold for a true indication of the vacuum in the system. If you suspect an open or wet system, be sure to use the gas ballast feature on your vacuum pump. The gas ballast prevents water vapor from condensing in the vacuum pump oil by introducing a small amount of fresh air into the pumping chamber. Open the gas ballast just slightly and then begin to watch your electronic vacuum gauge. If the vacuum stays at a consistently high level of microns or doesn't pull down below 5,000 microns, your system still contains contamination or has a leak. Repair the leak before proceeding. A way to speed the vacuum process is to use a heat gun. This warms the molecules and gets them to leave the surface sooner, speeding the flow of vapor molecules to the pump. Remember to be careful because they do get hot and will take paint off systems. Once you've pulled a vacuum that meets the manufacturer's specifications, you can close the valves on the core removal tools. Observe the gauge. It's normal operation for a rise in microns to occur. This does not indicate a leak. However, if the rise continues to atmosphere, 760,000 microns, there is a leak in the system. Check the system manufacturer's recommendation for tolerance. Once you're satisfied with the reading, close the valve that connects the manifold to the pump. You can now shut off and disconnect the vacuum pump. Your evacuation process is complete and you're ready for system charge. To charge, open the valve on the refrigerant cylinder. Add enough refrigerant to create a small positive pressure in the system. 
just enough so it registers, or about 3 psi on the low side. You can now remove the electronic vacuum gauge and complete the charging process per the manufacturer's specifications. Once the charge is complete, you can replace the valve cores and remove the vacuum valve and core removal tools. It's a good idea to simply replace Schrader valves as they're not that expensive, and new valves will reduce the likelihood of system leaks. Screw them back in and seat them properly. Remove your tools and you're ready to go.